Welcome back Savages to another video. In this video we're going to be installing glass solar panels on a wooden shed roof. So this follows on from a video I did previously where I installed some flexible panels like what you're seeing in the picture right now on a plastic shed roof. And the reason I went for the flexible panels, well obviously it's a plastic roof, it can't take too much weight. So in terms of how these are fared over time, they're still attached to the shed roof, but I think that's mainly due to the way I mounted them using some bolts, washers and roof washers to keep them firmly stuck to the roof. So in terms of power generation, a few of them have kind of dropped over time. And I think really it's down to the design of the solar panel. With it being plastic, over time water has actually got in underneath some of these panels from the top and just leaked into it. And so you're almost getting like a foggy effect to these panels just here. So the output you're getting has kind of dropped a little bit over time, but they're still functioning and still working quite well. So in today's video, we're going to be installing some heavy duty glass solar panels on this wooden shed roof on both sides. So in terms of preparation for this wooden shed roof before the solar panels go on, I've taken the opportunity to basically waterproof it as much as I can. There's already a layer of felt on the roof itself. So this is the other side of the shed roof and I've already applied the thick tar paint to it. Word of warning, definitely wear gloves. It's very sticky and it probably takes a day or two for it to actually dry as well. Now let's talk about solar panels. These solar panels are absolutely huge. So make sure you measure up the roof area before you buy them. In the UK, the standard size for solar panels going on roofs in a commercial setting is usually about a meter wide by 1.4 meters to 1.7 meters long. These bad boys are a meter wide, but also two meters long. And the reason for that is the standard size panels that you get on commercial roofs usually tend to be about 435 watts. These ones are 535 watts. This solar panel is classed as a very traditional monocrystalline type glass panel where the glass is just on one side. These days a lot of the installers are starting to fit these ones called bifacial panels where it's glass on both sides and it tends to capture the sun not only bouncing directly onto the front but also from the back where it bounces off the surface behind the panel as well. But because the surface of our shed is black there's not going to be much reflection so I see no point in using bifacial panels. But for me, I'd rather have the extra real estate and the two meters of cells on the top facing the sun directly. And with all those extra cells facing the sun, I'm getting an additional 100 watts of power. So that more than compensates for not having dual facial panels. So this is the spec of the solar panels, but don't worry, I'll leave a link in the description to where you can buy these. Bear in mind, they do weigh around about 28 to 30 kilograms. So you're definitely gonna need a helper when you're installing these. The panels themselves come with a 3.2 millimeter coated tempered glass. In terms of the frame, it's an anodized aluminium black alloy frame. And in terms of warranty, it's supposed to come with a 15 year warranty for the materials and the processing, and also a 25 year warranty for the power output. And also don't forget the maximum power of these solar panels is 535 watts. That's almost hundred watts more than what you'll see fitted on commercial roofs. Now in terms of mounting solutions, I did look at a couple of different types of solutions for this. I was going to use a traditional rail mount, but that does have its downsides in terms of it leaves a lot of space between the rail itself and the solar panel. So birds can nest underneath there, but then you need to put extra bird proofing around it. And I didn't want the hassle of that. So what I found was something like this product right here. And these are great. These are just called solar mounting feet. What I like about this product is it's very low profile, so there's no birds going to be able to get in between the solar panel and the roof, which you're going to be connecting it to. So you get four in a pack on both sides of the panel, and I think that should be more than sufficient for what we're going to be using these for. So this is what the feet look like when they're installed on the panel. This is the back side of the panel where it's just white, and you've got this connected to the outer rim, and you've got the holes all the way along your solar panel frame. Just screw it through there with a bolt and tighten it with a nut. And then that just leaves this surface right here to be able to mount onto your roof. So just to give you an idea of how these are going to go through the shed roof. So that's going to be our feet from the solar panel right there. So we're going to put a bolt in through there and drill through the roof. And we put a washer at the top to give it some strength. So we're going to have a roofing washer right there underneath the bracket. And that should stop any water getting into the roof from the hole that we've made. And then likewise on the inside, we've got another roofing washer, which will seal against the inside. So that'll be like the ceiling of the roof. So it should be sealed from both sides. 
probably put some glue or sealant just between these two as well and then we've got a nut right here to tighten it all up so because we've got two panels we're going to be connecting them together using this y-shape adapter so both the positives will come in on this one and then come out as a single line there now you can get different types of these y-shape adapters get ones with extension cables but they're prone to leak so i would suggest if you're going to get one which connects two panels something like this where it's all plastic is probably your best bet so there we go that's the panels mounted on the roof as you can see there's not much clearance between the roof and the panel itself which is a good thing because that'll deter any birds trying to get in underneath which is great so that's the stand we used with the bolts going all the way through fully secure and watertight so yeah looking good so let's just talk about cables so the solar panels themselves uh, came with only a short run of cable connected to them it's about a meter and a half so i needed to buy some heavy duty extension cables and i've gone for these ones here which are five meter and they're basically mc4 on both ends like that and what makes these cables very good is that they're actually six mil thick so they're really classed as heavy duty when you compare that to these cables just here behind these are four mil and these are classed as 12 agw but if you've got high capacity solar panels i would suggest definitely sticking to something like these heavy duty 10 agw cables and last but not least the final part of the puzzle is the charge controller so the one i've got currently is only rated to about 300 400 watts so obviously with the two solar panels that we've got combined we've got over 1070 watts so we need an appropriate charge controller that can handle that amount of wattage even if we never hit that peak so with that in mind i've gone for this victron charge controller it's rated to about 1200 watts and the beauty of this one is it comes with built-in mc4 connectors so it should be just a straightforward connection straight into them and you're up and running the beauty of these charge controllers, I've owned them before, they're very robust, come with great warranty. I think it's five year warranty with this particular one. It's got Bluetooth, so you can connect it straight up to your phone and you can monitor what's going on at all times. So there we go, savages. The charge controller is now hooked up. I don't have the battery connected up just yet, so it's just got the green LED float light just here. But the solar panels are coming in on this single line here. There's two spare lines if I need to use them for other solar panels. And obviously I haven't put the battery or anything like that on there at the moment. But I've got this all hooked up through the Victron app and it's all working. So there you go, Savages. A nice simple way of getting to DIY solar power and doing it yourself. It's kind of obviously stepping up to the next league by using real full-size panels. So I'm just getting familiar with the setup and over time I'll get an idea of what I can run from this once I've got it all set up. So I'll leave a link in the description to all the parts I've used for this setup. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comment section below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. And I'll see you savages on the next one.